Hey guys, welcome back to Trader. And today we're gonna to be going through the CS2 settings that you should be using. So after you've opened the game, we're gonna to head to the settings menu up here in the top left and head to video. So we're gonna start with display mode. You want this on full screen as it will give you the best performance. Next, we'll discuss aspect ratio. And this is just about the ratio of pixels on your screen horizontally and vertically. We're gonna leave this on 16 by nine, but feel free to experiment with different values and see what works for you. For resolution, you should probably set this to the native resolution of your monitor as it will give you the best balance between quality and performance. And finally, for refresh rate, you should just set this to the highest available option. Because this is a 144 hertz monitor, you wanna set this to 143 hertz. And next, we'll move to advanced video. Now, for this one, you're going to note that we have this window in the left side that kind of gives you live feedback of the settings as you pick them. So make sure you're keeping an eye on it and uh, having a look at what settings suit you best and what you like the look of. So for the boost player contrast, we want this enabled to be able to see teammates and enemies a little bit clearer. Vertical sync, you want this disabled because it meshes up the refresh rate of the game with the refresh rate of the monitor and that can cause a little bit of delay. So to eliminate that, have it disabled video value presets it will change the custom automatically so i'll skip that for now for multi-sampling anti-aliasing mode we want this to four times as it provides a smoother edge to certain edges in the game and you won't have jagged edges you can have lower values for better performance but i think a good balance is setting it to four times for global shadow quality you want this set to high because it gives you live shadows in the game which can be quite important for certain positions especially things like a main on ancient and heaven on vertigo you can see the shadows of enemies and that's definitely a competitive advantage you want for mod model texture detail you want to set this to low as it just kind of meshes the uh, textures and the models and it doesn't really impact the competitive advantage that you'll gain from other settings. So you could just set this for low for the best performance and the same kind of goes for texture filtering, except this doesn't really have as much of an impact on the performance. So you can set this to four times and just have a bit nicer looking game. For shader details, this is all about the lighting and how lighting reflects off stuff and shadows. You wanna set this to low as it gives you kind of more of a performance boost than uh, other values. You can try and mess around with values and see what you like the look of. And the same kind of goes for particle details. It will affect how smokes look, how molotovs look and different things like that. You want this on low as well. And one bonus thing about particle details is it can help you see around the edges of smokes and through molotovs a little bit easier. So you definitely want that one on low. For ambient occlusion, this is all about lighting and shadows again. So the lighting reflections on the wall and things like that. Now this one will impact your performance quite a bit. So you want this disabled unless you've got loads of extra frames just for the time being for the maximum performance of the game. For high dynamic range, there's a similar story here. You wanna set this to performance as uh, setting this to quality doesn't really improve the look of the game substantially in my opinion. And so performance just gives you the best possible FPS and that'll give you a competitive advantage. For Fidelity FX Super Resolution, you want this disabled as most of the other values cause a kind of blurry grainy effect to the game and uh, I don't think it looks very good and it can be a little bit distracting or not nice to look at. So uh, I would suggest have this disabled. And then finally, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. This is all about reducing latency between your inputs and the game. So we want this at least enabled. And if you've got a very high-end PC, you can have this on enabled plus boost, but it will cause a higher load on your graphics card. And that is gonna be the advanced video setting. So next, we're gonna move on to audio. Audio plays a pretty big role in CS2. It allows you to hear the footsteps and other sounds around the map of friendlies and enemies, and it can be quite a good resource of information for you to use. So we've got to make sure that they're fine tuned. We'll start off with the master volume. This is pretty much personal preference. You can set this to whatever you want, but just be careful not to have it too high as you can damage your hearing. Uh, and for the audio device, we can pick any of our devices from the drop down list or leave it on default. For the EQ profile, I would recommend to have it on crisp as it gives you the most clarity and the most kind of clear directional sound for the map and the sounds around the map. But if you find it quite harsh or you have tinnitus or anything like that, then you can leave it on natural. So that's what I'm gonna put it on for now. For the left and right isolation, 
for the CSGO experience, you want to set this to 100%. I like to leave it on a fairly high number. I've left it on 69 for now. Uh, but yeah, if you want it to sound exactly like CSGO and give really clear isolation between what's happening on the left side and the right side in terms of sound, have this set to 100%. And the same kind of thing for perspective correction. You want this set to no, just so that you can properly isolate left and right noises and it doesn't become so muddled if you have it to uh, no. For voice and microphone mode, we'll have it to push the talk so that you can communicate with your teammates. There's a handy little uh, link to go to the microphone key bindings so you can set up that push to talk key very easily. For the audio device, you should set this to default if you've got that set up right, or you can manually select your microphone from the drop down list again. And for the uh, other player voice volume or VoIP as it's known, um, you want this set to quite high so you can hear your teammates very clearly, but you can turn it down of course if uh, there's a teammate that's quite loud shouting in your ear. Um, or of course you could just lower their volume individually uh, or even mute them if you need to but you want this set to a fairly high value just so you can hear your teammates clearly. For Streamline Push to Talk, uh, you can leave this on no. If you're finding that your voice is cut off at the start or end of when you're speaking with the Push to Talk key, then set this to yes. Um, and that's just going to keep your microphone activated so that you're not being cut off at the start or end of your voice messages. And then for the microphone trigger threshold, leave this fairly low. Um, I know that there's some talk about adjusting this for boosted FPS, but basically you wanna leave this on fairly low so that your audio can be picked up very clearly uh, and it meets the threshold to be able to communicate in game. For hear my own voice, you can turn this on when you're adjusting your audio settings uh, just to be able to hear your own microphone so that you can kind of understand what it's going to sound like in game or if you're having microphone issues you want to turn this on so you can tell if your microphone is actually working in game uh, but we're going to of course leave this off for actual in-game use. For audio and background this is kind of personal preference I don't really want to be hearing the game when I'm trying to figure out something else uh, say if I'm tabbing out to my browser or anything else so I'm going to leave this on no but of course it's personal preference. And then for the music settings, these are mostly personal preference. There are a few kind of benefits to having some of them slightly higher, but for the most part, we're going to leave these mostly off, um, especially kind of the round end volume and the NVP music volume. And that's just so you can hear your teammates at the end of the round. Say if there's a AWP dropped somewhere, you know, you want to be able to hear your teammates communicate that. And the same kind of thing is true for the round action volume and the start of the round volume. You know, you want to be able to hear your teammates and all that kind of stuff, you don't want any distractions, so I'm going to leave this on zero. Uh, for the main menu, you can have this completely on what you want. Of course, I've left it on zero because <laughs> I just don't like distractions, but the ones that you do want activated are the bomb hostage volume, the 10 second volume, and the death camera volume. And that's just because they can give you critical bits of information. Say you're in a clutch, for example, and you want to know how much time's left on the, bo the bomb timer. The 10 second volume is really useful for being able to tell, you know, how much time's left on the bomb. Um, and so it's important to have these somewhat um, activated. For the mute MVP music when players are alive on both teams, uh, again, that's personal preference. I like to have this on yes, just because if everyone's got the same music kit, it can be quite annoying uh, to listen to everyone. But again, uh, if you find that you want different settings for these, completely go for it. Do what you want, make it your own and uh, yeah just enjoy the game in terms of the music but that's gonna conclude all of the settings for this video i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something if you want more information trade it has a blog going into a little bit more detail for all of the settings that i've gone through um, if you like the video make sure to like and subscribe activate that bell notification you know the drill and uh, i hope you enjoyed the video have a good day guys